How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. Let's talk about this AMC GME bag holder situation. Let me give you a disclaimer. This is not going to be for the people who are the true believers, who are committed to these plays, regardless of what goes on in front of them. I can't convince you of anything outside of the narrative that you've created inside your head anyway. Therefore, if you're one of those people, you're wasting your time watching the video because I, I, I will accept that I can't convince you of anything outside of these plays are going to make you wealthy beyond belief and they're going to retire you. And to be real, I hope it does work that way. Right. I hope you do find a play in the market that can retire you. I really do. However, I don't believe it's going to be these two plays. And I've been telling people right around me for a very long time that that was the reality of the situation. And I want to let people understand I'm not one of these people that have built my social media platform by telling you everything's a scam. OK, that's not what I do, because many of people that do that, they got something going on that they trying to hide. And as a result, that's why they point the finger at everybody else. I used to go to college with this chick from out of Gainesville and she talked about how her boyfriend was always accusing her of cheating. And the reason why he was always accusing her of cheating because he was cheating. Therefore, he was always trying to keep the pressure and the heat on her because that's what he was doing. And he didn't want her to finally start looking at him. And that's kind of the spirit behind a lot of these people where they built their whole platform around everything being a scam. Because a lot of times there's things going on in their life that they don't want being brought to the forefront. So they just always stay on the offensive. And that's cool. That's what they do. And they have an audience based around that. And I get it. That's not what this is. So I don't have a platform with everything being a scam. So if you come to the channel because of this video and then you sub because you like this one video, that's not really what this whole channel is about. We're not spending time trying to figure out who's this next scam or that's not what I'm building my platform around. Right. It's really not about that. This is for people to get an understanding of how these type of scenarios work. Therefore, they don't get caught into something else like this in the future, because this type of play really came out of the penny stock game. And what we saw happen in, let's say, the early you know, 2020, everybody started moving onto the Internet. And a lot of the same techniques and the same strategies they used in the penny stock game, they've now applied it to this particular play. And even though it is Friday, March 18th, and you're going to be seeing this broadcast recorded. I'm so confident as to where this share price is going. I don't care if the price on the date of the broadcast is higher than the date of the recording. Long term, I know where this is going. Now, could it you know, turn around and go to $10,000? Yes, anything can happen. A stock price can go into infinity in any scenario. So every ticker on the market has a potential to go into infinity. Everyone. Also, every ticker in the market has the potential to go to zero. It can go in both ways. Is it is it, so therefore, is it impossible that AMC and GME go to a thousand dollars a share? No, it's not impossible. Is it also impossible they go to zero a share? No, not impossible. The question is, which one has a higher probability? And then over what length of time do we think that's going to happen? And that's what I want you to understand. And I want to kind of show you how these kind of plays roll out, because if you see this in the future, and not just in the market, but in anything somebody's telling you uh, to kind of invest in, you really want to kind of understand how to kind of observe this. Because even if you didn't catch it early, you know, let's say you got caught up in the early hype of it, there should have been came a time where you kind of just started to recognize what's going on. If you actually understand how to look at a chart, you have a basic understanding of a business model of a company, and you don't let your desires to get caught up into this. There's nothing wrong with wanting to do better in life. However, I just think this was the wrong vehicle. Just my personal opinion. And we're seeing that. So let's look at the AMC play before. And I have a video on my channel. It came out maybe, I don't know, maybe five months ago now. And this is when AMC was trading around 30 something dollars. And I told people, you need to sell now. Because the price is not going to get better than this. That comment section got filled up with people that were true believers in the AMC play. These really wild conspiracy stories of fake shares and, you know, the dark pool and shares in Brazil and shares on the dark side of the moon. And, uh, you know, 
J.D. Stallinger and just all kind of wild stuff. You know, the guy that robbed the bank and jumped out of the plane. They never saw him again. You remember that story? Like all kind of wild things, man. And at the end of the day, the shell price now is $15. They should have sold at 30 because you could have bought in now. If you could have sold at 30 or bought it at 15. And if you think it's going to ride up, then ride it back up. Instead of sitting in the play where you bought at 40 and now it's 15. Now, let's look at the one year. This is AMC. Let's look at the one year. Let's look at the one year. What are we seeing on the one year chart? This is the one day candles. What are we seeing on the one day chart? Let's look at the one year. So let's look at this date. This is 525, 2021, right? It closed at 1641. Today is March 18th. We have 1547. Okay. We're about a dollar. What? Under the close January, February, March and May. Okay. And we're trending towards that direction. Therefore, if you bought in here and you have not exited, you're pretty much right where you bought. And this, this narrative that nobody's, nobody's selling, people are only buying, the chart isn't reflecting that. So then it has to be a conspiracy because I need to, to believe that nobody's selling, even though I got all these red bars, nobody's selling, but people are only buying. And as the price goes down, it's becoming cheaper to buy. Therefore, I'm buying, right? But if you're buying, somebody got to be selling. There got to be an exchange. So somebody has to own the shares to sell it to you if you're buying it. And the question I kept asking, and I asked when it was in the 30s, is if you believe this is going to a thousand a share, why do you need the price to go down for you to buy more? If I believe something is going to a thousand dollars a share and it's thirty dollars, I would buy as much as I could at 30. Why would I wait for it to go to 15? Because it may go to 100 as opposed to going to 15. Because like I believe the price is going up. You know, a lot of times when you deal with people and they say they about something, look at their actions, not what's coming out their mouth. Because their actions tell you what they're really about. If I believe that this is going to $1,000 and it's at 30, why am I waiting for it to go to 15 to buy more if I believe it's going to 1,000? Wouldn't I buy as much as I could at 30? Because it may go to 100. Why? Because I said it's going to 1,000. Isn't that what I said it was going to go do? There shouldn't be any waiting involved. Because once it takes off, it's short squeezes. You're not going to be able to catch it. You're going to be chasing it. And if we look at this chart, let's look at it on the weeklies. This is the one day. Let's compress a little bit. Look at it on the weekly. This is the weekly chart of AMC. It's weekly. And I talked about before, once it got around $60, nobody wanted to buy it anymore. Then it rejected 50. Nobody wanted it anymore. Then what did it do? It rejected 40. Nobody wanted to buy it anymore. And then it never really rejected 30. It somewhat rejected 30, but it just moved off 30 so hard. And now it rejected $20. Nobody wanted to buy that 20. And now we trading it around $15. It literally rejected every $10 mark. But nobody's selling, only people are buying. If you listen to the message boards, the people that got the YouTube channels. Now let's go into this right here. If you believe this is a technical play, which is what I just described to you, a technical play. Why does it, why does it matter about an NFT? Why is the NFT important? Why is how a movie did in the theaters important? Why is the plans that the CEO has for the future, why is that important? If I believe that this is a technical play, because if it's a technical play, the only thing that's important is what the chart is telling you. However, because I need to keep my social media relevancy going, because that's really what I'm here for, I have to now create a story today around AMC. And because I know that most of my audience doesn't find chart reading exciting, I now got to give them something else. And that's the only reason how most people are in this play. Because if it was a buy and hold until it explodes, who cares about the day-to-day -day movement of the, of the ticker? But because this play, and we're going to talk about another one, was created by social media personalities who have to create content to stay relevant, right? Because they're not traders, not even close, right? 
Um, they don't sell courses, even though they should, because they're really good at selling. They should sell courses and make a lot more money. But maybe someday, because someone made a million dollars off YouTube, so they maybe can't sell a million dollars off of courses. So I, I get it. However, because they're really chasing social media relevancy, I now have to create a, a, a narrative, a story around AMC instead of just what's on the charts. But this was presented to us as a technical play. That's how it was presented. So then how come we just didn't stay with the technicals? Because the majority of people don't want to listen to me talk about charts every day. I can't build a big audience around that. And I'm here for a big audience because one of the things you see on social media, and I've kind of peeped this since I started building out a social media uh, platform, is that many people are kind of like trying to get the high school relevancy they never had. They're trying to get that on social media. So you remember that person in high school that would do like whatever they could, whatever it took to be popular, good or bad, as long as their name was popping, that's all they cared about. Like that's really what goes on on the social media. Like people will do anything they got to do to try to stay popular in their little community. And it doesn't matter good or bad what they got to do, they do it. Because as long as they're popular in their side, like their little community, that's the only thing they care about. So whatever I got to say about AMC, whatever kind of dramatics I got to go through, whatever kind of character I got to create, I'm going to do that because the most important thing to me is not AMC or, or GME. It's my popularity. That's really what I'm here for. Because that's more important than anything else. And if you're a, a member of these communities that are being driven by these people, it is what it is. However, if you're on the outside looking in, I want to kind of teach you how to identify some of these things, because this is not going to be the only time something like this is going to happen. If they present to you that the play is about the technicals, right? And all of a sudden now they start moving to fundamentals. Well, then it's not about the technicals anymore. So why are they moving to the fundamentals? And looking at this play, what's most likely going to happen to AMC in 2022 is they're going to dilute the shares. If they dilute the shares, it's going to make it even harder to short squeeze. Why? Because you're going to need even more demand on shares. Right. This this ticker will be under ten dollars by the end of the year. Be well, be way under that, because what did it trade at before? It was trading at around five dollars before they built this narrative that this thing is going to short squeeze. And we're seeing it going back towards that. Like I said, look at the weeklies. Every $10 mark was rejected. Right? This was really the last strong buy-in was around summer of 2021 when they bought it back in to 50. And that was rejected really hard. Right? They, people bought it back to 40. It was a weak buy-in, but they got it back to 40. That was rejected extremely hard. They wanted nothing to do with the $40 mark. So the question I want to ask you is this. They didn't want it at 40 and they didn't want it at 50 and they didn't want it at 60. Right? So why would an NFT change that? Why would Spider-Man doing well in the movie theaters change that? They didn't want it at 60. They, the market doesn't want it at 50. They also don't want it at 40. The chart is telling you that. Because if you wanted it at those price points, you wouldn't be waiting for it to get cheap to buy more. You buy that 40 because it's going to a thousand, right? Therefore, you're telling the market what your buying behavior, what you believe in. People vote with their dollars. doesn't matter what they say on the message board. People vote with their dollars. They buy what they believe in and they buy at the price in which they believe the value of this particular item has. And you can try to convince them all you want. End of the day, they're going to vote with their dollars. The market has said that we don't believe that AMC is worth $60 a share. We don't believe it's worth 50. We don't believe it's worth 40. We definitely don't believe it's worth 30 because we didn't stay even around there long. Right. And we don't believe it's worth $20. We really believe AMC is worth around $15. And as time goes on, we see less and less value in this particular share. That's what the market is telling. Doesn't matter how many videos somebody makes about this ticker. The market is telling you this because all the chart is showing you is supply and demand over a specific amount of time. It can't show you anything else. It can't show us that there's hidden shares on the dark side of the moon. It can't show us that the trilateral commission got a vault somewhere and they got 10 million shares sitting up. It can't show you that the deep state has shares and they're behind this massive plan to, to turn AMC into bankruptcy. It, it can't show you any of that. Right. All the chart can show you. It's supply and demand. 
And it's showing us that the market rejected this at multiple prices, even though based on social media, nobody's selling, everybody's buying. Right? And if you see a scenario like this in the future, right, you need to be able to recognize this. Therefore, you don't get caught in it by people who are just trying to figure out, well, I wasn't that popular in high school. Here's my one big opportunity to finally become the popular person that I couldn't be in high school. And they, they're willing to say whatever they got to say to you to try to get that popularity. Not even about the money. They just want the popularity. They want the juice. You want to understand that. Okay, now let's go into the GME. Let's look at AMC real quick. Earnings is not bad, right? Earnings is not bad, but it doesn't matter, right? Because like I said before, it's not about their earnings. It's about the fact that nobody wants it at this price. So like I said, is this a fundamental story or is it a technical story? Because the technicals are telling me what price people are willing to buy this at. Fundamental story is something separate but the, like I said, is this a fundamental story or is this a technical story? And then fundamentally, right? Why would this share? Why would this particular share price be worth what it is today at 1538? From a fundamental standpoint. So let's start looking at the balance sheet. Let's start looking at the strength, weakness and opportunities and threats in this particular space. Let's start looking at the four projections. And also we got to add into the fact that it's probably going to get diluted in 2022. So they're going to add more shares to the pool of shares available. Right now, let's look at GME. Okay, so we're looking at the daily. Today's March 18th, it's trading at 91.80. Okay, let's say here. No, let's go here. Uh, 224.2021. Right, it closed at 108.73. Right, so a year later, we're under that price. So I'm repeat myself. 225.2021, it closed at 108.73. Right. Around a year later, but a little bit over a year later, we're under that price. We're under that price. OK. Same scenario. GME was supposed to be a technical play. It's supposed to be about the technicals. There's a massive short percentage. We put buying demand on a particular a company. It's going to squeeze it up. Right. That took place. That's this. That's it right here. That's it right here. That's when that took place. Right. Then once they covered at these prices, it slammed back down. Then everybody thought it was going to happen again, but it never happened again. It got rejected here. Right. In the, the let's say the mid, the high 200s came all the way back down to 150, traded sideways for literally weeks and weeks and weeks. This is right before they earnings got to 300 and got rejected extremely hard off that 300. And they also diluted shares here. Went all the way back down to 150, right? And we got mid 200s, got rejected again because nobody wanted at that price. Another price swing to 250, got rejected again really hard. And this was everything sold off because the market went into a downturn, a risk off situation. Now we are at what? 91.80. Now let's go to the weeklies because, you know, you're looking at the daily charts is really extended. What are we seeing on the weekly? We keep seeing big rejection here, rejection in the mid to high 200s, rejection again here in the mid to low 200s, rejection here at the low 200 again, rejection here at really the low 200s, the high to mid, to mid to low 200s again, then pushing down really hard because the whole market is selling off. And what we're seeing is that anytime it really tried to go over, like let's say over the past year, they tried to get over that 235, 240, 250 mark. The market rejected it. So we got a rejection here around there. We got a rejection here around there, even though it opened at 206, closed at 190. Right. We got another rejection here, opened at 230, closed at 199. And then it just pushed down, like I said, because everything was selling off around November, December of late last year. Now, they have a. A. A fundamental story as to why this is a good investment. They're going to get ready to open up an NFT market. The question is, GME opens up an NFT market. Why would that make anybody value the stock at a higher price that's now supposed to precipitate or create this short squeeze? Because this is supposed to be a technical story. Why are we talking about fundamentals? 
Then if we go to fundamentals, where we can see with GME is what? They keep missing EPS on earnings. Missed by 0.09, missed by 0.87, missed by 0.270. Oh, misses keep getting bigger. And this was coming out of the holiday season, which is supposed to be historically the busiest season. But what we're finding with them is that it's costing them more money to make the money that they're currently making. So the cost of them making the money is going up, which means they're not running a really good business. Right. So fundamentally, the story is not good. Right. AMC has a better, really currently a better fundamental story than GME, even though it was reversed when this situation started off. So GME's fundamental story is really not that great, nor is that technical story that great. So which one are you going to hang your hat on? Right. This is the same company giving you a 15-minute a, a earnings call with no guidance and they're hanging the phone up. But this is going to short squeeze. Ryan Cohen's going to take this stock to wherever it's going to take it. Now, this is the same scenario. Nobody's selling, just only people are buying. Okay, then why does it keep getting sold off then? Because everybody's buying. Nobody's selling. Well, somebody has to be selling it. Because why does it keep getting sold off? So in it, from here, from 1122 to 124 this is weekly candles nobody was selling only everybody was buying people were willing to sell at low and lower prices that's why the price kept going down now were people buying this yes people were willing to sell this though at lower and lower prices that's why the price kept going down right takes two people for the transaction people were willing to sell this at lower and lower prices that's why the price kept going down and when you get in these type of scenarios and people try to convince you, right, that this stock is just going to keep going up. Or it's going to go into infinity. Anything in the world has a top price, which means that there's always going to be a price people will not buy it at based on the scenario. Buying GameStop is not a life or death situation. It's not medicine. It's not food. It's not going to save anybody's life. It's not going to prevent somebody from dying. And what we see is that based on the market at that particular time, people just don't believe. It. Nobody believes in this company really of, uh, over 100, even though it may push back over 100. But definitely nobody believes that this thing should be over $200 anymore. And I think it's going to really struggle over 150. And this is another scenario. By, by end of the year, this will probably be around $50. And what you've seen is essentially, let's just take it here. It, it would have walked down uh, from 199 to probably around 50 in one year. And they'll still be talking about the NFT and yada, yada, yada. The market that they exist in is contracting. They're spending a lot of money. And like I said, is this a technical play or a fundamental play? So telling me how much money they got in the bank and, you know, that they don't have any debt. Those are fundamentals. I thought this was a technical play. But the same thing, people that are still trying to figure out how can I finally one day be the popular person, right? Because, you know, being a husband, being a father, being a solid person in your real life community, uh, being a value to people by helping them, um, you know, do something in their life that can benefit them. That's not going to get me the attention that I think I desire or I deserve. Right. I got to be Mr. Popularity. And it's that desire to be popular is what has a lot of people just saying anything and everything, even if they themselves know what's incorrect. But as long as I can sell it to somebody else and it's going to give me that popularity, I'll do it. And so you see these videos, you know, guys heat mapping GME. I don't I don't understand what that's supposed to do. Right. I'm going to do a daily GME video. I'm going to heat map it. Talk about the fact that, you know, the whatever commission is hiding how many shares. We're going to do this and we're going to get the amount of real shares to come out. Like, why do you think there's a grand conspiracy to keep GameStop stock down? Like, wh wh why? Why would there be this massive conspiracy? So let's say GameStop trades at $300. What does that do to anybody? Why would there be this massive conspiracy to keep this stock price down? Like, who is Ryan Cohen? Why is he so important that everybody wants to see him fail at bringing GameStop back? Like, what is that? And, and that's what you have to really understand is that you get these, these extremes on the Internet where, you know, 
everything being a scam is the same thing as everything is a conspiracy against d this movement. It's the same spirit, right? And you got to understand when people are really trying to get you to invest in that as opposed to getting you kind of look at yourself. Right? There is no grand conspiracy against GameStop. If GameStop becomes a very successful company, it's really better for business. Because it allows more people to make more money. Right? There's no historical context to why GameStop and Ron Cohen shouldn't be successful. Guys like that have always been allowed to be successful in this society. So why would they be against the guy now? It don't make any sense. He hasn't taken this controversial political stance where people are going to be against him. That's not what he's doing. He's playing really his shareholders. He's really playing them. But it's easier to, to fool somebody than to convince somebody they've been fooled. That's why I said this video is not to try to convince people they've been fooled. It's to try to prevent you from being fooled in these type of scenarios. Okay? What they should have done with this right here is traded it, not buy and hold it. Because if you bought in here while it was selling off, you're underwater. Because, you know, buy the dip. So if you bought in here while selling off, you're underwater right now. So now you're waiting for it to go back up. But you're underwater if you bought in here while it was selling off. So if you thought 155 was a great price, you're underwater. And the question is, well, do you think it's going to keep going down or do you think it's going to go up? And that's what you want to ask yourself. And this is why I tell people. You need to spend time learning the market and learning how these things work instead of jumping in behind somebody that's trying to figure out how to be popular on the Internet. As opposed to somebody that's actually trying to teach you what it's going to take. They may not be as entertaining. They may not be uh, as sensational. I don't know what the word is about. It's about sensationalism. They may not have those aspects. Right. But the question is, what do you really want? I, I get it. And it, it, it makes more sense to me now as time goes on that many people really think they live boring lives. And so they're looking for any kind of excitement. I lived a very, very exciting life for a very long time. So I had to slow my life down. So I don't really have that desire that I think somebody else's job is to entertain and bring excitement to my life. If I want to get have an excited, I know exactly what I need to do to turn this thing back on. Right. Like I used to live a very, very exciting life. Like it was like a movie. Therefore, I don't have those urges to try to seek that out. I don't think it's somebody else's job to provide that to me. I just don't. I never did. I knew how to make my life exciting. I knew exactly what I need to do to bring excitement to my life. And I'm starting to realize more and more that that's what people really are looking for. And I had a guy tell me that before and I didn't really get it because I just couldn't wrap my head around it because of how I came up. But I'm starting to realize that like it doesn't matter what it is as long as I can provide a level of sensationalism and excitement to people. They'll buy into it because it's more exciting than their day to day life. Right. And that's what a lot of people have bought into. So the day to day soap opera of GameStop and AMC. Right. Is the thing I'm buying into. And me being invested in it because most of these people don't have any money in this play anymore. They've lost pretty much all their money. Right. But this is more exciting than my nine to five. The fact that I got to pay these bills, the fact that, uh, you know, my relationship situation ain't going the way I wanted to go. This becomes more exciting. So I buy into that. But you're underwater or you lost money on the play because you never really understood it. But I, I guess they see that as the cost of tuition. I don't want you to be in that situation. I want you to be able to look at plays like this and figure out how you're going to get paid out of the play. I have puts on AMC that I exited with, with a profit, not the profit that I wanted, but I did exit with the profit because I got out right before everything started to tank. So I was able to get profit on AMC puts, even though the IV was really high. It moved so badly. I was able to get um, profit out of it and I just got out of the way because what I got tired of doing was having anything to do with that community. And like literally, I just it became weird. That people were still trying to tell me, looking at this chart, that this thing's going to go up. Like, it almost became weird. Like, the people that was in the cult, unfortunately, that thought that this spaceship was going to come pick them up. Like, they just are so unfortunate because it's the most preposterous thing in the world. Right? But they just believe that. And it, over time, it just becomes, you know, it becomes unfortunate that um, they've allowed somebody to persuade them of something like that.
not what they're going to do, what somebody else is going to do. The problem I didn't like about any of these plays is based on what somebody else is going to do. Somebody else is going to do something to make me rich in the stock market, not what I'm going to do to make myself rich in the stock market. And then now we just sit back and wait for somebody else to do it. And the problem is, well, what if that don't happen? I don't have an answer to that. So it has to happen because I can't entertain what if somebody else doesn't do what I think they're going to do to make me rich in the stock market. The market is not supposed to work like that. The market is based around what you're going to do. Now you have competing factors and things that are going to impact. But what are you going to do to make yourself successful? Right not I'm going to sit back and everybody else is going to move in the way in which it's like those, you know, you get those football teams or those college teams where they play so bad at the beginning of the year that now going into the playoff scenario, like, you know, you get to like the last week of the NFL season and team A got to beat team B and then team C got to lose the team D and then team E got to also lose the team F. For team A to go into the playoffs because they beat team B. Like you don't want to be in that type of situation at the end of the year. You want to be in a situation at the end of the year where you know what? We win and we go into the playoffs. We don't need to win and have everybody else lose too for us to make the playoffs. Right? We call it in football controlling your destiny. You want to control your destiny. Right? Even though you really don't have control. But you want to feel like you got control of your destiny. Right? And that's the spirit I see that a lot of these people have to where like, I'm going to do this and then all this other stuff got to fall in place for me to be successful. And I really think that's how they perceive their life. Right. I don't have any control over what's going on. Therefore, because I don't have the control when it don't go the way I want it to go, I can blame everybody else. Right. I'm not saying you got total control, but you do have some control over it. Right. But in my opinion, your success or failure in this market is going to be 95 percent based around you. Five percent is based around things you can't control. Right. But you buying into a play at fifty dollars. And you run it down to 15, 50, 50, 15, 42. Because of the Moas and the, the the short squeeze, you know, and the Muslim Brotherhood holding your shares and no disrespect to Islam. I'm just using that as an example of these conspiracy theories that they keep spinning off. I just think it's really unfortunate. And I want to really encourage people that are not in these kind of communities be really wary when people try to make you a champion of a company like this, right? And even when the shell price is going down, they keep telling you why you should stay in the deal and that this deal is going to make you rich because of this scenario, yada, yada, yada. I'm not saying it can't happen. It's like I said, the shell price can go into infinity. It also can go to zero. It go in both ways. However, as a trader, you need to learn how to trade in and out of a position. One of the things that I see with this particular type of play is that they act as if they buy and hold people, but they have conversations like traders. Well, you got to figure out which one you are. Are you a buy and hold and you just buying and sitting on it? Or are you a trader? Because what they do is they buy into it and say, we're going to hold it until it goes up. But then you have conversations about the day-to-day -day movement of it like you're a trader. Well, you can't do both at the same time. So I buy and hold Apple. I could care less about the day-to-day -day movement of Apple. I don't care. Right? I really don't. Okay? I buy and hold in a certain uh, index funds. Don't care about the day-to-day -day movement of it. Don't care. The goal is to just keep accumulating. Same thing with Bitcoin. Don't care about the daily movement of Bitcoin. Just going to keep buying. I told people I'm going to buy Bitcoin all this year. Don't care about the day-to-day -day movement. Because I can buy Bitcoin fractional. The price of it don't matter. I just keep buying it. Right. Don't care about it. They ban Bitcoin in Istanbul. Don't care. Right. If they allow Bitcoin in Czechoslovakia, don't care about that either. I've already made my mind up what I'm going to do. So I don't need to go watch a YouTube video about how this particular politician said, I don't care. As long as they allow me to keep buying it, I'm going to keep buying it. You don't care what them people do. Right. Because I'm not going to miss the opportunity to accumulate now. Because I missed the opportunity to accumulate in the past. So I'm going to just keep accumulating. That's my only goal. Don't care about the day-to-day -day stuff of it. And that's what I want you to understand is that I am a, I don't trade Bitcoin. I buy it. I accumulate it. I don't trade Apple. I buy Apple. I don't trade a certain index fund. I just buy it. 
Therefore, the day to day don't mean anything to me. I don't need to create a story around it. I don't care. Apple, uh, they had a particular plant in China. They got shut down because of the pandemic. They're not going to be able to do any manufacturing. Don't care. Just keep buying it. Don't care. It don't mean anything to me because I know their management is so good. They'll figure out a solution to that problem and they'll keep moving on. That's the kind of corporation you got. And that's what I want people to understand. Therefore, to wrap this video up, because I don't want to be long winded. When it comes to plays like this, I don't want you to be taken advantage of because you're looking for something. And what you're really looking for is excitement. You're looking for a distraction from your day to day life. You're looking for sensationalism. I would encourage you to like join a, uh, a community organization in your area, right? Don't buy, you're looking for sometimes a sense of community and I get it. You know, human beings are built that way. We're group oriented people, but I would really encourage you to like maybe join something in your area. Uh, because one of the things that I've seen, especially on this internet is we take advantage of those type of feelings in people. And the end result is the person that started it, they make all the money and the people in the community, they don't make any money. And that's how the entertainment game works. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was create a scenario to where I wasn't the only person making money. I wanted to try to show other people how they could be successful and how they could make some money because I didn't just want to be an online entertainer and I make all the money and nobody else don't make no money. And then I got to try to figure out what's my new entertainment piece. Because I never had a desire to be an entertainer, right? I just did. I never felt like the world is missing out on my entertainment. I never felt like I was robbed of an opportunity to be this entertainer. I always had an Emmy, but I just never got the opportunity. I just never wanted to be that person. I never wanted to have all eyes on me. I, that's not who I am. And therefore, if you're one of those people, I just want to really encourage you. Maybe try to find something in the real world before you get into these type of scenarios. Because it's really not based around you becoming successful. It's really based around the person that is creating the content and organizing these platforms to make them successful. YouTube gets more successful. But a lot of people that bought into these deals, right, that bought into these deals, it's going to be hard for them to figure out how to be successful. Right. That's pretty much going to be the video. Like I said, it's March 18th. This video is going to be broadcast at a later date. The price of these particular companies can be up or down. It doesn't matter because I can look at the long term trend of these companies. That's all I need to know about it. Hope you got value from it. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you got any questions. And if you want to do the comments about, you know, the, the, the shares in Brazil and all that. That's cool. You told me that last year when it was thirty dollars. Right. The price is much lower this year. So I guess y'all need to go to Brazil and like get those shares out of lockup. I'll go to the dark side of the moon and, you know, link up with the Transformers, man, and go get them shares from the Decepticons. Like, whatever y'all got to do, man, to make the situation right, y'all go do it. Don't wait on somebody else to do it. Don't wait on Gary Gensler to solve your problem because he, he going to be good whether your problem gets solved or not. I want to really encourage these fanatics around this play. And it's not wrong being a fanatic. I'm a fanatic about certain things. So I don't want you to think I'm saying that as a pejorative. But if you're a fanatic around this play, what are you going to do about it? Except make more online content. Go out in the real world and make a move. Do something. Right? Instead of typing to death. Right? Do something in the real world about this play. If these people are stopping you from being successful, do something. Do something about it. Go to Wall Street. Do something about it. Reach out to your congressman. Do something about it. Tell them I'm not going to vote for you again until you solve this problem. But this internet stuff, come on, man. Stop it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, I'll talk to you later.